Okay, welcome everybody. Um, today is a working group for um, the Ortelius Captain uh, integrations. Um, so, what I have in front of us is a, a an event uh, diagram uh, that I laid out um, as a starting point and. Um, just want to walk through it. I think we're going to have to make some changes um, just to make things, uh, make sure I got all the events going in the right places and things like that. Um, so the way this works is it's a just a regular markdown file. And so the markdown file is over here on the left and I just have it in preview uh, inside of Visual Studio. So all you do is you tag the block with Mermaid and then we're doing a sequence diagram uh, and then all it is, is we um, give it our from and to and what the, um, the action is. Um, so that's kind of how uh, this is laid out. And when I did this, uh, this is really just to get us through the dev stage of the pipeline. You can think of it that way. Um, where we go out to a quality gate uh, check. And if the quality gate is good, then we would move on to the next stage of the pipeline, which would be like um, QA, for example. Um, I did put in uh, all, the, all the events. So you'll see that we have the starting uh, event, the running event, and the finished event. Now, one of the things I kind of uh, assumed was uh, Captain was going to be our control plane uh, for everything. So with Captain being the control plane, we would be pushing, um, kind of uh, broadcasting the events out to Captain to listen for um, and not have uh, every single tool um, listening. So for example, uh, even though we could make Ortelius uh, into uh, a listener for all the events. Um, so if like something happened on the Git repo side, Ortelius could um, know about it and act upon it. But what we, what I kind of decided was to make, uh, kept in the orchestration tool uh, at that level. Um, so with that, I'm gonna stop there and see if anybody has any questions with how it's kind of uh, laid out. And, and if not, we'll go ahead and dive in. Everybody so good? Steve, so Steve, can you uh, like, uh, can we see the full screen of the diagram? Like some of the pieces are missing. Uh, let me try this. Does that help? Uh, yeah, I think this is everything. Or you have like more boxes in, to the right? No, I don't think uh, so. It goes up to quality gates <laughs> is gonna be okay. the last, is the last okay. box. Okay. So if I okay. shrink this a little bit, it'll get a little better, bigger. Make it maybe that's a little bit easier to to view. Okay. So um, one of the first things in our kind of our use case scenario is um, we're going to have uh, uh, a microservice developer. Um, go ahead and uh, commit their changes. Now the commit could be either uh, a direct commit to, to main or like a merge commit. Doesn't really matter um, for this example, but what, we're, what we have at this level is uh, the, something happening at the microservice uh, Git repo. So um, what I'm assuming is uh, it's a, a poly repo um, for one microservice uh, is going to be in one repo. So if we have you know 50 microservices, um, we're going to have 50 repos, and each one of these uh, microservices repos could be doing a commit at different times. Um, so versus a monolith repo where uh, everybody's working on the same repository with different subdirectories for their microservices and the merge and the, and the commits are going to come in a little bit differently. So this is assuming uh, a poly repo uh, at that level. 
So when we do the git commit, um, the captain would be lis listening for uh, that commit uh, to come through. Now, one of the things I wasn't, um, because I have not configured captain myself on how exactly that happens. Um, if it's like a web hook um, or how captain is configured uh, to be associated to a particular uh, Git repo. I'm assuming it can. Um, if somebody knows, just jump in and, and fill in the, the details here. There is a code for um, GitHub action that they have written for uh, GitHub integration with Captain that we can leverage here. Okay, so they're also, using, they're using yeah. a, a GitHub action? Correct, correct. And also like um, Brad was working over that piece to like improve that functionality as well. Okay. All right, we'll put it here via. Okay, so the action is going to uh, do a trigger then to Captain um, to do to let it know that uh, something happened in the repo. Okay, so the the next thing that we need to do in kind of like in our our overall processes, we want to go ahead and start a Docker build. Um, and I think this is gonna be some similar where Captain doesn't really have um, a built-in Docker um, integration. I think they have it, it just like a generic uh, job executor, which I believe we would use to start uh, to do the, uh, to use the, um, the Docker build. So when that uh, generic job executor starts, um, it's going to broadcast, it's going to, it's going to um, actually start running uh, the, the, uh, the Docker build step. And then um, it's going to go ahead and um, broadcast a finished when that happens. Um, so at this level, we are actually doing a, a, a Docker build and do the tag at the same time, just to make life easier. Um, uh, once that's com been completed and we do the send the finish back to Captain, uh, the next step is going to be to Docker push, uh, which will go ahead and push out to the um, Docker registry. And again, I put in the, the running and the finish pieces um at that level and the reason why uh we have the, uh, the kind of like the three states you know the start running and finished is if you wanted to do notifications um to say that you know if you have a long running uh like the docker push or the do docker build may run i've seen some docker builds run for over 10 minutes um so that's where you'd start um, broadcasting like a Slack message saying, I started the Docker build and then I finished it, you know, uh, 10 minutes later. So that's why we're kind of laying out in the state diagram, the sequence diagram, the starting, running, finished. Once the, the, we finished, um, the next thing that we want, we're going to go back to Captain. And this is where I wasn't quite 100% sure I think, like I said, uh, Ortelius can listen uh, for the Docker push. And I think I need to change this one here. Start component. This should be kept in here. So again, we're going back to Captain being kind of like the control plane. And once it comes back uh, with the Docker push finish, and then Captain's going to tell uh, Ortilius, uh, go ahead and create your new component and app version. Uh, Ortilius, and this is where we're going to need to be able to um, accept the event coming from Captain and also be able to publish um, on the, the different states, the running, finished, and um, back. Now, uh, Ukarsh, what was the thought on this? Were, were we going to use, just have Captain call our existing APIs through um, a job executor 
um, or were we going to write our own like captain services at, at this point? Yeah. <clears throat> so actually, uh, like what we what we thought is uh, we will have a captain Ortelius kind of service wherein a uh, few component that you have shown here, like uh, Docker build tag, Docker push, and uh, the functionality that is interacting with the captain uh, plane itself will be uh, encapsulate encapsulated uh, with that application. So let's say you have got this finished uh, Docker push event. So there will be a webhook specified, like this is my API, which is responsible for starting a component or an app version. And that will be triggered whenever we have this event. Uh, that was our thought process. Perfect. Yeah, so that on the Ortelia side, um, what we'll need to do is, uh, because Captain's gonna send us a cloud event, um, Ortelius does not know um, how to deal with uh, that cloud event and the payload at this point. So that would be something that we'll need to define a new uh, REST API to accept that um, cloud event and the payload to be able to start doing the, the component updates and, and pieces like that. Now, one of the things when we do that, that what we may, we're gonna need when Ortelius does this, um, the component uh, app version piece and it starts running it, it actually does work to interrogate the Git repo. So um, that may be something that we may need to do as well is to, on the Ortelia side, when we want to update the component and app version, we may need to clone uh, the initial repo and branch to be able to get the information we need out of that repository. Because it may not, all that data may not be visible um, at the, um, at the event level. Um, so for example, things that we pull out of the Git repo would be like um, the readme file, the license file, um, any Swagger or open API files, um, the SBOM, uh, those type of things, um, we would need to uh, have access to the repository. So we may actually on, on the Ortelia side have one more, it's kind of, hidden at right in here where we go ahead and, and actually do a git clone uh, at that level. We'll have to see how it plays out uh, and what information we have uh, coming across in the cloud event. That makes sense? Yes. Okay. So once um, Ortelius has finished the um, the uh, creating the component and app version. Um, we're going to go back to Captain and say that we're done. Now, Captain, uh, in this example, we're going to say that we want to go ahead and deploy the new version that we just created out to our dev, our, our dev environment. Uh, to do that, we're actually going to have Captain talk to Ortelius um, to do the application uh, version deployment. And the reason why we're doing that instead of going right to Argo is Ortelius has all of the, um, the logical view of the application version. So if we have multiple, this happening at, um, for multiple services, um, we're gonna have multiple uh, components and multiple applications created. Um, when we go to do, do the deployment, we know um, what the desired state is of what development uh, is going to look like. Um, and because we know what the de desired state of the dev deployment, um, we will actually go ahead and um, take that snapshot of all the different versions of the microservices and apply that to the application Git repo. So one of the things, like I said uh, earlier in the week is we do need this application uh, Git repo to represent um, kind of like the, the snapshot of all your manifest files for your deployment. And in this case, I just, I just said Helm. Um, it could be customized um, and, and do it that way. It doesn't really matter. 
Um, either way, Ortelius is going to go ahead and update uh, the Helm charts. And one of the things that you'll see, let me see if I can find the file real quick. I'll give you an example. I just know that this one's here. So this is an example of uh, a parent chart with all the uh, underlying microservices. So this is like the uh, representation of the application and all the dependencies of each microservice, uh, their version of the chart that you wanna use and where to go find that chart. So when we go and um, with this re-render, when we're doing this, um, the update component, um, we're actually gonna go ahead and, and create a chart at that level. And I may figure out, I may break this out uh, running component app version into more detail um, in another uh, diagram, just so we can kind of see under the covers what's happening. But basically what ends up happening is at the application level, we want to go ahead and, and update all of these dependencies. So let's say it was our, our um, text file uh, that microservice that got updated. Uh, this is where we're going to, going to go ahead and write out a new uh, chart YAML file to the Git uh, application Git repo bump the version number to the correct version that we wanna use. And then once we do that, we actually go ahead and uh, commit that to the, Git, to the Git repo. Now, as soon as we commit it to the Git repo, um, we're going to, Argo is gonna actually pick up and start the deployment. So this is where we're, um, we're not interacting with Argo directly. We're interacting with Argo through the Git repo to do a kind of like a Git ops uh, process. So from there, once we do that, we're, two things are actually going to happen pretty much simultaneously. We're going to tell Captain when we finish deploying from the Ortelia side. And then at the same time, uh, Argo is going to start its deployment process. Um, and then Argo, I believe uh, Brad was working on this to have Argo send out an, an event through its notification hook to allow Captain to know that a deployment started, finished, and, and that level. Um, and same thing, I think this one finished deployment. I don't think we need this one here because I think Ortelius will be just look, looking at uh, the Captain event. Uh, at that level. So let me take that one out. Where is it? There, I'll take that one out. Steve? Yes. Uh, one question. Um, Ortilis has like, um, well, has like the, the dependency, are more information just, um, it has like information, additional information about the relation of the of, of the the components, uh, the dependency and stuff like that. When we like update a Helm chart, like the the metadata from Ortilius is part of our Kubernetes uh, manifest, or is, is only on on Ortilius? Uh, it will get pushed into um, the values file. So let me bring up. So what ends up happening is that uh, information will come across in the values. So if we look at this chart, so this is one of our microservices charts. Okay. And this one's really simple. I didn't include everything, but mm -hmm. we're going to, um, we know like uh, where the repo is, uh, we know the SHA, we know the how it was tagged, um, and that's going to be coming from uh, Ortelius. Okay. I was just thinking that if we are using Argus, Argo to, to synchronize everything and we need, we have, we have to, 
uh, the reboot has to be like everything because it's a single a single source of truth. So I was just considering if we are like maybe missing something that maybe we can put it like a, on on man. Um, on manifest metadata or something like that annotation just to be sure that everything it has to be in the repo because when you say like application repo it's get like the sensation that is like maybe more technical part about the deployment deployment but not all the logical information about the components and application sets yeah that's a good that, that's a good point i think we could um right now we don't um we don't push everything into uh, the the values file for each um, you know all the manifests, so we could mm -hmm. change that to go ahead and um, take everything that Ortilius knows about and push it into the values files. So, um, like you said, it's it becomes the single source of truth in the in the Git repo. We yeah, we I could this, we could yeah. easily do that. Yeah, I mean, it's just because of the fundamental issue about that. And even Artilius can take advantage of that at some point, just to yeah. like every 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 component or here in this diagram, like can convert on of the repo. Because I don't know, I'm thinking like in a new installation, so like that, when you have, oh, okay, I have a part of the data here to Artilius and here only for deployment. Just thinking like a, on 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 a progress scope, but at least we we already have like the mechanisms. So it's just putting more information on that uh, could be better, like for 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 new or more integration and stuff like that. Having yeah. everything in there. Yeah, and then when we implement the the blockchain piece, we can um, add that information as well to where the uh, like the the NFT token. Um, our ID is located. So, um, and those things that will be persisted in the immutable blockchain, we can tie that back as well in from the manifest point of view. So that, that's a great idea. And I'll, I'll take a look to see what we need to do. Um, I think it's just a, a small scripting change that we need to update um, to make that happen. Right, thank you. And the other thing, um, is at the actual manifest level. Um, let me pull up a manifest, like at the deployment. Um, right now, we're, we're not putting any um, specific um, Ortelius information into the meta, uh, into the meta uh, data, but we could also do that. So it's not only in the, in the manifest, but when you do a deployment that it actually ends up in the Kubernetes cluster as well. Yeah, we use a lot of, uh, now it's pretty common to add in a lot of stuff, metadata, inclusive like a JSON file and stuff like that. Not a huge one to have like a really ugly <laughs> manifest, but uh, at least some kind of information. Uh, for example, in OpenGV, you use pretty much metadata to do all the graphics. So you can like put it from the meta metadata some, uh, just like 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 you were what you're doing with mermaid and uh, we took it and in the graphical console you just have like a, all the graphic uh, design about the, the deployment or something like that yeah. it's pretty much what is like the graphic side you have uh, in ortilius but uh, everything like that can be just like put it as code in metadata and i don't know yeah, yeah i think that's a uh, I'll have to look at the, um, or if somebody wants to look into what is the requirement to add in custom metadata tags, if you can just go ahead and if I can just like make, um, yeah, it's pretty much you just put like a string with anything. Yeah, you, if that will work to... or if we need to have like a, a specific namespace. You know, if it has to be like uh, IO dot Ortelius. Yeah, usually I'm saying like, yeah, because at some point you're putting like a lot of information on your metadata. So if you use like namespace and it's going to be more easy. But after that, you just take to pick one convention that usually is going to be just a value, um, variable of value, or maybe something uh, more complex like JSON or something like that. But it, that's pretty much easy. You just 
take one value and just put it inside your application. He <laughs> can do like everything. The only, yeah. the only important thing that there is like good uh, best practices for metadata. So there is some kind of guidelines. So from yeah. some stuff that you should put and uh, what not put over there, but it's, it's just like just that. Yeah, if, if somebody wants to take that task on, that'd be great to figure out what the best practices are um, and what we need to, um, how we should create our, our tags if we need to do like a, a namespace uh, type of format, which I think is the correct way to do it. Um, and then the values. So in, in this case, our values would be down the road will be like IPFS, uh, slash slash and then Sid some we put number. like everything there we have like a booze people responsible people uh, oh. contacts email we put a lot of stuff over there and all there is more about the CICD so everyone that is part of the CICD like add some kind of uh, steps into the metadata so that's useful too so it's like me the platform B uh, take this part on the stage x and add this and check this and it's yeah. pretty much like a trace uh, right well it and, has and, to be and, and one of the things that i know that um is a big gap that ortelius provides is because ortelius is listening on the ci cd side and also it's it can be involved in in listening on the deployment side it mm. can it can link together um your Git commit uh, and whatever it's going to be. Um, so you could actually link this deployment um, and the image that was deployed over to the Git commit that was the source code change. So that's one of the things that I've always seen that's bizarre between the CI CD tools and the deployment is there's, there's no link between source and um, yeah. artifact that was deployed. And Ortelius can uh, has that information and can provide that metadata very uh, easily. So yeah, I think that's a great idea that we can, um, we need to expand into the metadata piece uh, and add in what we know uh, about uh, the components and the applications and pieces like that. Yeah, I think we need to prepare something simple for the architecture meeting. Yeah. Like from reference about how to use it and some examples. Yeah. Uh, and just for a start. Okay. That works. Uh, something like that would be probably more accurate. Um, Awesome, that's a great idea. We'll, we'll definitely have to take a, a deeper dive into that. Um, so just to wrap up uh, the um, process, oops, we can see it down here. So Argo finishes the deployment, gets the, um, the cluster synced to the Git repo, uh, and then tells uh, Captain that it's completed and then Captain has a built-in feature for quality gate checks. Uh, and then we go ahead and do the quality gate checks and, and finishes the quality gate check at that point. Now the next, I, and this is where I kind of stop, just like at the dev stage. Um, once the quality gate check has finished, um, we would actually start the deployment again at this point to a new environment. If I can get it highlighted correctly. So this would be start a deployment of the app version to QA uh, at that level. Now, one of the things that um, uh, Ortilius will do when we start that deployment at, at QA, we could have deployed you know, 20 times to development, which gives us drift between QA and, and, um, and development where QA is 20 versions back. Um, uh, Ortilius knows that and will be able to tell uh, Argo, this is the new desired state of QA. This is what I want you to, to sync to um, based on the version of the application that's being deployed. So that's one of the nice things that um, Ortilius would do automatically is to, um, regardless of the state and how much drift you have between um, uh, versions, 
it will help bring, bring you to the desired state that you want for that application version. So this is where we would go into the next state of doing the deployment again, uh, updating the Helm charts, uh, doing basically these steps down here. And I gotta figure out how to number these. Um, if anybody has a mermaid insight on how to number each step, that would be great. Um, and then um, from there, we would go ahead and do QA. And then finally, we would do production uh, the same way. So we'd start a deployment to production and we'd probably run the quality gates again to make sure that uh, we don't need to do the automatic re remediation. Now, that's another thing I didn't put in here is if the quality gate failed, what happens at that point? And we start doing backouts. I just wanted to keep this uh, pretty simple. So that's kind of um, the, the process uh, that I've thought of. Does anybody see anything that um, is out of whack um, if I totally miss something or we need to tweak a few things here? So I think, uh, thank you, Steve, the wonderful explanation for all of these activities. And I think the last day when we talk with, I think you, me, and uh, when we have a podcast, it's Sergi, uh, Andreas, Brad and you, we have been on the podcast. And one of the things that and Andreas shout out that we want to have a build history, like when we put stuff into the dev environment and when we move to the QA, how the things is happening. Is it the breaking too much? How the history of build commits is happening? Like, and let's say we do a quality checks and we see a failure. And I want these failure to be listed somewhere in the application manifest file. So I think they really, I think right now they're figuring out a way to add this information into the, but do you think like if in the Ortelius, if we can add that information kind of a quality gate between in the Ortelius, like when we're pushing, the, when we're starting the app version and when the quality gate is passed, we can add that information that first time when this application moved to the next QA environment, it passes. Yeah, and that's a great point because uh, right now in this diagram, it's kind of hard to see. I'll go from this way. So when Argo finishes the, the deployment at this point, um, so this is Argo notifying Captain that the deployment has finished. Um, one of the things is Ortilius wants to know when the, the deployment was finished as well. So he can log, uh, log that the, that this application version made it was completed to this environment. So that was one thing I wasn't sure about on the captain side. If, if Ortilius needs to listen to Argo or if Ortelius needs to listen to Captain and Captain does another notification. I was kind of confused on the, the on how things are moving about at the control plane level um, uh, for the events. So when, you know, you want Captain and, and, you know, when you need multiple tools to listen to the same event, how that happens inside of uh, the, the, the event diagram. Does that make sense? Does anybody yes, know? Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. I think uh, last time we talked with the Brad, I think he's like he's telling us like it's more easier to send back notification to or uh, or to the captain instead of giving notification to the Ortelians. Right. So I think uh, at this level, we're going to do captain is going to send out uh, to Ortelius. Argo CD deployment. So I think that's what we need to do. Oops, going wrong. Oh, I spelled it wrong. That's why it's all messed up. All right, that looks. So I think that's what we'll um, do at that level. And then Ortelius will go ahead and uh, back to Captain saying um, deployment logging. I'll 
do this finished deployment logging. So that way, like you're saying, uh, Syme, that it'll um, that information about the deployment would be recorded inside of uh, Artilius. And when we put the blockchain into place, we'll actually record that deployment log in the immutable ledger. Um, so we have that information uh, persisted permanently. So uh, I think, uh, uh, David, does, uh, do I get the link of this repo? Like if I want to add something or uh, uh, kind to, is it uh, available on the GitHub repository? Not yet. Um, what I, I will do is if, I, if this all looks good, um, I will get it um, added to our documentation uh, repo. And from there, people can pull it and, and update it. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Like I, I, I will definitely spend some time during the weekend to add some number. Like what the first notification, first the first event coming up. What the second and was the third was the fourth and all yeah that. and i think I, I i have to look at the mermaid um uh um documentation but what would be nice is e if each one of these is is numbered because what we'll need to know um from kind of like a design implementation point of view is to call out like um, when we do this git commit uh, action, this is the, the example um, cloud event and the cloud event payload that we're going to be pushing around. So that's going to be our like our next step is to um, really document which what is what is the data being passed around on all this on every single one of these. So it'd be great if we can get these numbered somehow. If anybody is like a mermaid guru. Uh, that knows how to do that um, will please jump in and, and make those updates. And, and again, um, if everybody's good with this as a starting point, I will go ahead and add it to the documentation repo. Yeah, I think this is a good start. Maybe we can work around over this and have a discussion, couple of discussion, and we can finalize all the Yeah, because because this is Markdown, if we um we can do the next uh if let's say this is number one uh i'll just put one here for example um i can go ahead and at this point um do step one and i can put more detail here about it and it'll be um referenced below here so that's where we would kind of um, lay it all out. So everything is all defined in one document um, to make it easy for folks to have the reference. Got it, got it. And as we go further, um, I think there would be some changes uh, regarding <clears throat> how like Argo is communicating with Captain and Ortelius. Um, because oh, that part. Yeah, I definitely. Yeah. And that, that'll be some of the things that um, we'll need to call out is like on this one, um, like you're saying, Akash, this was a, a GitHub action. Um, like this notification Docker build may be the captain uh, job executor um, where we get into this. This will, could be a native, um, our uh, Ortelius captain service doing that. So we'll def definitely need to call out who's, how it's implemented and who's doing it. Yeah, yeah, that is why I, like I wanted to like work over the work over this template that you have made. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, whatever I understand, I can make the uh, make rectifications here, and then we can discuss. Perfect. And I will. Um... Uh, Sergio, do you mind uh, creating an issue about um, uh, about the metadata in the manifest? I think Sergio might left. I think. Okay, I I'll take care of it then. I'll go ahead and create that issue. So that's what we um, where we what we have going on. Um, does anybody have any other questions at this time, or kind of makes sense? Yeah, and if there is anything that uh, you guys want to work on, uh, you can call out. 
Yeah, so what we'll do is this will give us, um, when we number each item, we'll have to see if it's, if, if, it's, um, if it's already existing or if it's something that we need to do or if there's something that we need to tweak to make it happen. Um, so that will then turn into kind of our, uh, our to-do list uh, coming up. Great. And we'll have to, um, we'll, we'll circle this uh, past Brad as well. Um, so he can add on from his side. Uh, I think he's traveling today and we'll catch up with him next week. Um, oh, and that does bring up a point. We will do, um, we'll start scheduling probably two working groups. Um, one, um, my time in the morning, basically this, this time slot. And then another one in uh, my time in the afternoon to pick up Brad in, in uh, Australia, New Zealand timeframe uh, their morning uh, tomorrow. So we'll, we'll figure that out next week, um, what the time slots look like. I may send out a doodle um, so we can get some uh, good participation. Great. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. And I will uh, get this posted uh, to the documentation repo today, and I'll send out a message on Discord to, to let folks know where it's at. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Wonderful presentation. All right. Thanks, everybody. Nice. And I'll make sure that this um, recording gets posted as well, so uh, folks that couldn't make it could uh, uh, take a look at it. Thanks, All right. everyone. Have a good day, everybody. Good day.